Hey viewers, welcome back to Ray of All Trades. I picked up a new to me 2010 RXV golf cart. It's already got the carbon fiber looking dashboard in it. It has a stereo. They added a couple of speakers. I'll address that in a second. The paint looks really good on it. Seats are in really good shape. So I think this will uh, work really well for the campgrounds. Nice lightweight, low to the ground. What I noticed is the windshield was uh, extremely dirty and it's not. this one's not really cleanable. You could try using a buffing wheel, things like that, to, to possibly get this thing cleaned up. But I haven't had good luck with those and I wanted a tinted windshield anyway. So I ordered a new tinted windshield from uh, Fat Cat Golf, I guess is the name of it. I also noticed that the stereo didn't pick up any uh, AM or FM stations, so I'm assuming that the antenna is missing, so I ordered, ordered an antenna. I ordered a um, USB charger for the dashboard and put that in. Some rocker switches to control my lights and my stereo and things like that. Ordered an uh, under, uh, underglow lighting kit for underneath. So four strips that should allow me to change colors and things like that with remote control. Ordered new speakers. So the speakers that are on there, only one of them works. The other one um, doesn't work. When I move the wires from one speaker to the other speaker, I only got about half volume out of it. You know, basically disconnected from one speaker and put it on the other one. I only got about half volume out of it. So I know that the speaker has a problem. Plus it's also got a little bit of rust on the inside. So I know the speakers have a problem. And then I also know that um, the one wire that was going to the dead speaker also has no signal coming to the other speaker. Basically, I swapped the speakers to the you know, from the signal wires, and I could tell that I had a problem with both. So I'm going to be pulling the stereo out um, anyway to take a look at the back side of it. So, and it's got a cool little stereo that you could hook up Bluetooth, things like that, and listen to tunes. But we're going to be doing a little bit of work to this thing, a couple of mods to it, and I'm sure I've got plenty more to do because it is a 14-year-old uh, cart already. So they've already put lithium batteries in it, which I thought was really cool, and that was the selling point for me because it was a the cart is only half the weight of my bad boy buggy. So let's let's put a few parts in this thing and let's see what we have. I'll start off with the windshield. This windshield, and I'm not sure if all of them are like this or not. This windshield is using T50 Torx screws to hold it in. I think I would like to put uh, something else to fasten that so that you can take it off on the road if you don't have a T50 wrench with you. So I may put these back in for right now, but I'll be looking for some wing nuts or, or wing bolts, I guess, um, to put back in there. Those things are on there good. I'm gonna try to pull off one side. I'm not sure if it comes with these or not. Let's find out. And this should just slide right out of there. Oh, that's nice and clear now. Yep, that looks like it's gonna fit just fine. We got some new windshield holders. Let's see, do those match up? Yeah, they look about the right size. So one's gonna go on this side, one's gonna go on the other side. Let's pull that off for a second. Oh yeah, they're actually much larger too. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not because of those screws. This may be my opportunity to get rid of those screws. Drops on pretty easy. Let's peel back just enough plastic to put it in the groove.
looks like that this channel can go up a little bit. Sorry about that. I take a quick phone call. Um, I noticed that this is down a little bit further than it should be. Let's go ahead and slide that up. I'm just going to eyeball it for right now. It's not that critical. So peel back the plastic front and back. It's a lot more snug than I thought it was going to be. So let's try to put this on first. See if that makes a difference. Okay, so windshield's propped up. Let's put this on. Those things are on there tight. I'm thinking that if I put these someplace warm that they would flex. I may put them in some hot water or something that they would flex a little bit more. But let's just see if I can get it on here. Those things are snug. All right. So I think if I uh, could have rested them out in the sun for a little bit, let them warm up, that probably would have helped with the installation. Okay. And I think I might be able to make that work. That's pretty close. I'm just lining up this edge. Move this windshield up out of the way for a second. And then we're going to pull this back. On both sides. So right now I've got the gasket resting down here. And let's see if we can get this on. Appears to be about that far out. Gosh, I can actually see through it. Yep, that difference is night and day. So it has the holder for this to fold down into. The old one had locks, which I thought was pretty cool. So the old windshield had these locks, which was actually pretty cool. You know, it would actually lock into there and hold it up. Um, I'm not sure that it's necessary. And then of course it had these big locks up, t up at the top to uh, anchor the top of the windshield too. So this one's just slightly different. Eagle Parts and Products is where this came from. Almost can't tell that there's a windshield here. I feel the static coming off of this thing though. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like I should attack the stereo next just to make sure that 
changing out the speakers and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to find any kind of surprises. So this is a, feels like a T47. Let me get the other side out. Okay, I know I have some T30 screws to take out of here, and I think I have some nuts to pull off of here that appear to be about 10 millimeter or maybe 3 8 That one felt like it was stripped. And it just actually just pulls right out. I'm just trying to be gentle because I've never taken this one apart. I'm going to disconnect the wiring back here. Got one for headlights. It's literally just two spade lugs coming off of it. I'm just gonna pull those off. I might be going about this all wrong. I pulled that off and then the whole front of the buggy came off. Y'all check this out. Got a clip right there. I'm gonna clip right here for the headlights. And then the whole front end comes off. All right, now I have access to the entire stereo. All right, so I've got a red and yellow that are taped up to this red right here. So that's gonna be a constant power source, and that's not correct. Um, I don't want constant power, I'd like to have it switched. Yellow should be memory, and red should be alive. The black is my ground. The blue is for power antenna that for some reason they have wired up, even though I know it doesn't have an antenna. And my antenna port is empty right now. These two RCA jacks are gonna be my speakers most likely. This bundle of wires is my headlight switch, my ignition switch, and my voltmeter. These wires right here are obviously my headlights. Let's see, I had to fight with it just a little bit, but it came out. Looks like they just glued it in place. Here's my power connector. And then it looks like my speaker connectors are right there. And I tell you what, instead of it going to a preamp like it talks about, I think I would actually like for it to be wired up to the speakers. Let's see. Let's pull this slide off of here. Um, here's my power connector. So that's B plus would be battery. My GND would be ground, so this is most likely red, this is most likely black. You have an ignition plus, which turns on the stereo whenever it senses ignition. And then you have uh, an REM, so I'm guessing that might be remote antenna, something like that. Then I have my speakers coming off of here, right rear plus and minus, right front plus and minus, left front plus and minus, and left rear plus and minus. I'm probably just going to use the two front speakers. All I'm planning on doing is utilizing some spade lugs that are insulated that I'm just going to stab onto there and I'll run my wires up to it. All right, y'all, I'm going to go old school on this thing. So these legs, I needed a really, really thin spade lug to be able to hook them up. I don't have any, and um, I'm just going to go old school and just solder these things on there. It'll get rid of the vibration issues, things like that.
And let's get the leads tinned up. my old old man eyes out here let's see if I can do this without melting a whole bunch of plastic Which one was plus, y'all? Looks like the plus is furthest away from the power supply. Hey, anyway, what I'm gonna give myself about eight feet or so. I'll do the same thing over here. that'll work <laughs> so I did a little bit of digging and yanking on the dashboard and there was this amplifier stuffed way up inside that glove box uh, they did a good job hiding it as I didn't see it we're gonna pull it out though because like I said I everything was all the wires were hooked up I didn't have the correct output coming out of these the speakers here so the um, speaker leads are wired in here and then the preamp wires were hooked up and then I had power and ground and then I had a um, the antenna lead was feeding into the amplifier to turn the amplifier on once um, once it sends power. We're just going to pull all that out of there because I don't I don't want that in there. And this hot lead right here, and let's tape it up. As we've got some wiring connections that I want to make sure we're done properly. So the red's taped up. Let's pull off this blue antenna lead. That was the power antenna lead coming off of the stereo bundle. Here's our ground leads. Let's pull off those two. Now can I get a better angle? So I've got two ground leads coming off of here. And then let's pull off the speaker leads. Get all these wires pulled out where we can work on them. All right, let's see if we make some sense out of these wires here. All right, these two were my original speaker leads. This is a ground wire that's got tape on it.
And just like I suspected, always untape your connections because you just never know when somebody's just going to twist some wires together like that. All right, so now there's my ground. Here's my speaker leads. Let's go ahead and trim those back. Uh, we're just going to momentarily twist these together to make sure everything works before we start making our final connections. So I'm going to take one set of speaker leads off of the, the stereo, the head unit. Let's grab our stereo connection that has even more tape. Another twisted wire. I don't need the blue wire because I don't have a powered antenna and I'm not controlling an amplifier anymore. And yet again, that battery dies at the most inopportune times. All right, anyway, so I took the ground lead and I twisted it together to the ground. My speaker leads, which are touching right now, they shouldn't be. So let's do that. Just momentarily hooking everything up. And hook up my power to the stereo. I hear audio, but I only hear it out of one of them. So let's see. So it's not this one. Let's take it off of that one. Yep, I don't hear anything off of that one. And I have it off of that one. So either my speaker wire is broken, coming back to the speaker, or the speaker itself is actually shot. But like I mentioned, I swapped the leads on the good speaker, and I still had half volume. So anyway, yeah, we got to change out the speakers on this thing. Let's get this thing wired up like it's supposed to be. All right, before I got too carried away, I needed to, with wiring, I needed to make sure I set up my wiring. So what I did was I pulled out that light switch that was here, drilled a with a hole saw, and then for this switch pack that used to have this hole right here, I just used a uh, oscillating tool and I just trimmed it out so I can make it fit. So it's going to drop in there like that. This one here, I had to file a small groove at the very top that has a rib here. It allows that to sit flat. Hopefully I got the hole just big enough. It seems like it's going to be really tight though. There we go. I can get some screws in this thing to hold it in place. And I can do headlights, uh, radio, and undercarriage lights. Alright, I ran my two speaker wires and then um, a new power wire, 16 gauge, 16.3. And then I disconnected the wire from underneath. So this was my extremely oversized um, power lead that was running up through there. Gonna tape all those together and try to push them through. There's a little trap door under here 
that it goes up and under. Um, I'll show you here in just a second. All right. I'm just going to try to pull those wires through. I've already uh, fished it all around the frame and everything else like that like I needed to. So that little trap door is right here. And my intention is that I'll be able to just grab this wire and pull it through. So that, let's see, here's my old speaker wires. Let's get rid of those. Not like those anymore. Here's my old ground wire, which was about, if I had to guess, I'd say 18 to 20 gauge, something like that. That's what used to run everything. And then here's my power wire. Let's see. Ah, how about that? Another connector. Let's see what it looks like. This has a fuse in it, by the way, and I've already pulled it out. Let's see, here's my wires. And we've got a taped up connector. So let's see what this looks like. Not planning on using it, I just wanted to see what exactly it looked like. <laughs> and friends, that's why you always uh, check and see what you're working with. I've got a crimped on connector right here with some wire that was wrapped around and then a giant blob of solder. It looks like it was burned on. Anyway, yeah, that's what that's what we had. I don't think that was going to be a fire, but yeah, that's what was running up through there. So I had to order a 48 volt to 12 volt step down transformer that should be here tomorrow. Right now, the way that, that uh, they had it wired, they had a really small ground wire coming off of here that ran into this piece of heat shrink tubing. So that giant red wire you saw was only as good as the ground that it would have carried, which obviously wasn't good. So this is now going to be my um, power and ground going up and I'm planning on taking 48 volts out of it versus just 12 volts off of it. So instead of using that little step down transformer, I want to pull this wire off. We're going to make a new 48 volt signal, which I believe is going to come from here and here. Stretch this wire just a little bit further to make that happen. I should be able to have plenty of wire to be able to do so. Anyway, there'll be 48 volts coming off of there. We'll have a 48 volt to 12 volt step down transformer up under the front, and then we'll uh, tie all of our wiring in. I'll be back as soon as I get the parts. Okay, I did some wiring, but before I finish buttoning this up, I wanted to show you guys in case somebody had any questions. I put a 48 volt to 12 volt step down converter transformer, DC to DC converter, 48 volts to 12 volts. So it's a 48 volt input, which is my red and black here. And then I've got a 12 volt, 20 amp max, um, yellow and black right here. So the 48 volt side, which is red and black, is running to this heavier gauge all the way back to the batteries. So I've got a 48 volts coming up into here from the batteries. I have 12 volt output coming here all my grounds for all my 12 volt stuff are all tied together right here. So this is a uh, one ground goes to the undercarriage lights, one ground goes to the battery and the USB charger, and the other ground goes to my 
headlights because I hooked up my headlights to this switch as well. I'll show you the switches here in just a second. Um, I also added the antenna for the stereo, put it up here. YouTube won't let me play the music on it, but I checked it and it does pull in stations and the speakers do work, the new speakers do work. Coming off of this uh, 12 volt output, which is my yellow and black, again, my blacks are all tied together here. The black for the, the ground for the 48 volt goes straight back to the battery, but the black coming off of the 12 volt 20 amp comes to here. That's where all my grounds come together. My two hot uh, leads, which is the uh, yellow and red coming off of the stereo, and then also the hot lead coming off of here. I twisted all those together and I have those coming up on this wire here, which comes up to the switches. So let me show you, let me explain before I get to the switches. This yellow feed right here with the fuse on it, this is my power input to the switch pack. And then all of the other switches, all are red wires going up to the switches. So in other words, this is feeding the switches, the hot, and then the switches on the dash are controlling one coming out here to the stereo and the USB at the same time. One of them is coming into this really, really small red wire here, which goes to my wiring and remote control pack for my uh, undercarriage lights. And then I also have a, a red wire that's coming up for the headlights. So one switch is, like I said, one switch is headlights, one switch is radio and uh, charger, and uh, one switch is the undercarriage lights. So I'll be fastening all this up. I just wanted to show you what the switch, what the wiring looks like. And that all comes up into right here. So if you notice, I have the hot and ground coming up into the switch pack right here. That's what turn, the ground turns on the lights for this thing. But the hot... This is my input, and then as I turn on my switches, it supplies power to this one, or to this one, or to this one. And that's my switch pack right there. All right, so let's do a really quick update. So you saw that the yellow and black was my 12 volt supply. My uh, red and black is my 48 volt supply. My 48 volt supply, I broke the um, red that used to go to the white, and it now goes through this relay right here. So normally open contacts. The black was my ground, and that stayed my ground the entire time over to 24 volts. I used the yellow of the relay, which is the coil of the relay, which would be pins uh, 86 and 85. When you energize that 48 volt coil, it'll close those two contacts. So that's what I'm doing with the black wire, and then I ended up using the green wire, the extra conductor I had pulled back to the battery and I'll show you what I'm, how I'm doing that. So when the solenoid on the cart turns on, it supplies 12 volts to this side of the solenoid. That's when I get the signal, this wire right here turns into that green wire because it wasn't quite long enough. So this is basically my green wire coming up. My green wire gets 48 volts over to the relay. My ground is still coming from the battery back here. So whenever this turns on, 48 volts gets sent up to that relay up front right here which is my green wire and my black wire that's that that's that controlled 48 volts i was just talking about when that works when this turns on it allows the 48 volt coming from the battery which is this white wire to come up through the two contacts here which is 30 and 87 that then turns into the red wire and comes back here and supplies 48 volts to here so you see, I'm just using this green wire as a trigger of the relay to allow this to break the 48 volts from the battery to this. And then my 12 volts feeds the whole rest of the circuit. I'll tidy all this up and show you what it looks like. And uh, we'll put this thing back together here soon and get a ticket for a ride. All right. So here's my headlight wires are coming off of here. This was a spare conductor that I didn't want to cut out. Um, my speaker wires running back through all the stuff running up to the dash. Mounted the transformer, the slip down transformer. Um, like I said, the stereo, the uh, USB, the relay. Probably should put some labels in here and put the cart back together. Let me do some cleaning up, get that uh, nose put back on. Let me show you what's going on with the relay. Right now, you see nothing's lit up. If I turn the key on, 
I get power, now I have lights. That's reverse, obviously. That's forward. There's my headlights. That's my radio, which will come on, right? So it, it has uh, juice now. So I can turn it back off. And then these are my undercarriage lights. I don't know if y'all can see those, but that's starting to light up. I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, and then I uh, turn the key off. Can you see them dimming out? So that'll keep me from killing the battery without a key in it. Well, there she is, folks. Put it back together. Windshield looks good. All you have to do is uh, turn the key on. You see I've got blue lights on that dash for the switch now. First one is headlights. Second one is my radio. And of course the USB charger I keep talking about. And then my undercarriage glow lights. Then the stereo. I'm just gonna play static for right now. The, the antenna works, but YouTube will stop me because of uh, playing music. Got good even volume on both of the speakers. Got this little uh, USB charger. It has a, a power light on it, and it also has this little plug to cover it up. Got the speakers mounted. And then you can see the underglow lights working. Something that the kids wanted. It changes colors with the music. And then um, obviously if, if everything's on, turn the key to the off position. It takes about 10 seconds. You'll see the glow lights and everything go off. There it is. That way I don't have any dead batteries. Anyhow, kind of excited. Hope you all got something out of the video. Really appreciate you hanging out. I'll catch you guys on the next one.